Here is an astrophysics problem, introductory astrophysics problem. I actually had this on my last test, and now I can show you the solution. I kind of came up with this. I, I like the problem. So the problem is that we have this comet at this position right here with some velocity. It's moving towards the sun, and then it goes zoom, and it comes by. And so the question is, if we know the initial position, I'm using just, uh, you know, arbitrary units. Uh, it starts at position 2, 1, 0, and its initial velocity is in the x direction. But what is the distance of closest approach and what's the initial, the, the, the velocity at closest approach down here? Um, okay, so obviously you say, well, you're dealing with velocity, you're dealing with position, we should deal with the work energy principle. And that's a great idea. So let's write down the work energy principle. I can say the work is a change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy. If I include the system of the Earth, not the Earth, the Sun and the comet, then the work is zero. So that means I get K2 minus K1 plus U2 minus U1 is zero. So let's put in our values. K2 is going to be one half m, that's the mass of the comet, lowercase m, m, v2 squared magnitude minus one half m v1 squared magnitude, u g u2 is this gravitational potential energy, so it's going to be minus g mass of the sun mass over uh, r2 minus a negative plus g m m over r1 equals zero. So can't I just solve for r1? Well, no, right? I don't know this term. I know V1. I don't know that term. So there's two equations, two variables in there I don't know. That's two variables I don't know. So I can't solve it. Well, I can do one thing, and that's divide by the mass and multiply by 2. So I get a, light, a slightly different equation. V2 squared uh, minus V1 squared uh, minus 2GM over R2 plus 2gm over r1 equals 0. Okay, I need another conserved a quantity so that I can create a second equation. If I have two variables, I need two equations to solve two unknowns, right? Okay, so that's my one equation. I'm going to just rewrite that up here so we have some more room. I like lots of room. It just makes me feel a little bit better. So let's just rewrite that equation up here. So is that too high? No v2 squared minus v1 squared minus 2gm over r2 plus 2gm over r1 equals 0. So what else is conserved? What else is constant throughout this path? And the answer is angular momentum, right? So we say torque net on the system is equal to about some point O is equal to the derivative of angular momentum with respect to time. Now, I'm going to make the assumption that the comet has a significantly less mass than the sun, and the sun doesn't really move, and that's fine. I didn't include it in my work energy equation either. If I take that as my system, there's no torque on the system. So this is going to be zero, or as a, a vector, or L is constant. L total is constant, which is just the angular momentum of this. If I include the, if I put the, calculate the point with respect to the, the sun. So then I don't have to worry about the sun. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate the angular momentum up here. I'm going to do it the full way. So remember, L is R L1 is R1 cross M V1. Well, let's go ahead and do that cross product, okay? Because I have, I have these values. So I'm just going to write them as the following. L1 is going to be M times X hat, Y hat, Z hat. Do you remember how to do the cross product? And then I'm going to put my R term. So R is going to be equal to, I'm just going to write this as Rx, Ry, 0. Because it was not in the, it had a 0 uh, Z component. And then my velocity is going to be negative Vx, 0, 0. You don't really have to use the negative. Now when I take the cross product, I get the mass times x hat, and I cross out that, and I get 0, 0, 0 plus y hat, cross that out, and I get 0, 0, 0. So now I just have the z hat. So z hat is going to be 0, and then minus a negative, so it's going to be m, I already got the m there, uh, r, y, v, x. So l1 is in the z direction, 
Okay, so L1z is going to be M R Y V X, and I've already made it. I've already included that as a positive number. I put the negative sign in there. But I know M. I don't know M. Let's say M is one, and I know R Y and I know V X. So it's just a constant. Okay. Now, what about over here? Now, one of the things we have to kind of think about is at the closest approach. So <clears throat> imagine that the comet's right here and it's moving like that. Actually, in this case, it, it would be moving. Um, no, the force is like that. But it's moving that way. So the force tells us the rate of change of the velocity. And we can break that into two components, right? One that changes it in the angular direction and it changes its speed, and one that changes its radial direction. So at the closest approach, it's going to go from accelerating towards the, the star, move and the, the rate of change towards the star to the rate of change away from the star are different. So at this point, the rate of change, the velocity has to be perpendicular to the position. These two have to be perpendicular at closest approach, right? Because if it wasn't, then it would keep getting closer or further away. That's the only way that it's going to be at closest approach. So that means I can write an expression for L2z. It's just going to be r cross p, but those are perpendicular, so it's pretty easy. m r2 v2, and that's the magnitude. So this has to be equal to that. So m r2 v2 is equal to m, I'm going to call that ry, ry, I know that, vx. I'm just going to call it that. It's really v1x and r1y, but, and the mass cancels. And now here we can solve for something, right? I can solve for uh, r2. So r2 is going to be equal to ry vx over v2. Now, up here, I can substitute that in for this r2, and I'll get an expression with just v2 in there, and I won't have uh, two equations to unknown. So my second equation is that, and I'm substituting it into this. So if I do that, I get the following equation, v2 squared minus v1 squared minus 2g mass of the sun divided by r2. So it's going to be divided by ry vx, and that's, the po that's 0.65, that's not negative, right? I've already said that many times. And then I get the v2 up here, and then I have plus 2gm over r1 equals 0. So notice that I have a squared term, I have a linear term, and then I have these two together are a constant term. So that means how do I solve that when it's equal to 0? I use the quadratic equation. So if I, if I write this as a v2 squared plus b v2 plus c equals 0, then v2 is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And you may be thinking, wait, I thought we were never going to actually use the quadratic equation. Well, you know, you know that's not true. Okay. So here, let's just write down our expression. b is equal to this, negative 2gm over ry vx. c is equal to, well, a, I didn't do a. A is 1. C is equal to this and that. So it's going to be 2gm over r1 minus v1 squared, and that's the magnitude. Let's just go ahead and switch over to Python and get our values for v2. And you do, you see we get 2, right? Because we really made the assumption that uh, v and r are perpendicular, which happens twice during that orbit. It happens at the furthest point, too. But we only want the lowest one. So I'm going to use Python just to calculate this, uh, and then we can check that by doing a numerical calculation. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay, so let's do that. And then we can, once we have v2, uh, I can get r2 right there. So let's do it switching to Python. Python activated now. So I'm just going to put my constants in here. g is 1, m is 1. I'm going to say this is 1, too, but let's put it point 0.1. Um, and then I had r1 was the vector, uh, oh, it was 2, 1, 0, and then v1 was the vector, 
negative 0 0.6500. Okay. And do I need anything else? No. Okay. So now I'm going to I'm going to write down my a b and c. So a is 1. And this is you don't have to do it this way. I like to do it this way though. b was negative 2 times g times m divided by v1x v1 dot x. Right? That's the x component. Actually, that would be negative. Remember, I, I switched that. And then uh, ry. So r1 times r1 dot y. c is equal to 2 times g times m divided by r1. So this is the magnitude of r1, right? Because it's for potential energy. And then minus v1 squared minus mag v1 squared again. Now I can solve for uh, v2, 2. It's going to be uh, negative b plus square root b squared minus 4 times a times. You see how it's nice doing it this way? Um, divided by 2 times a and then v2. Actually, that'd be v2, 1. Let's call it v2, 1. That's the first one. I should call it plus and minus, but that's fine. Uh, and then this one is v2, 2. And I'm just going to change this to a minus. Okay, and let's print those out. v2, 1. I can just do it right here. v2, 2. And I didn't, it didn't work. Unexpected division. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I was doing LaTeX. That's what I was doing. I don't know why I did that. Okay, so there's my two velocities. Now I want the I want the higher velocity, right? That's going to be at the closest point is with the higher velocity. Uh, so this one right here. Now let's just go ahead and find the initial position. So R two is going to be equal to uh, R y v x over v two. So R one dot y times v one dot x divided by v two, and that would be the magnitude, but it doesn't really matter, but divided by the magnitude of v2, 1. No, I, 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 I didn't write that as a vector. v2, 1. And let's print that. Okay, so now let's just, why is that negative? Oh, because again, I had that negative sign in it. That's fine. Now let's just go ahead and model this numerically. Um, and I've done this before, but let's make a graph. Uh, x title equals x, y title equals y, and then I'm going to make two two points. F1 is g curve, color equals color dot blue, uh, dot equals true. I'll leave a dot, and then my other one you don't need it. F2 is g curve, color is color, color dot red dot equals true. So I'm going to use this second graph to make my sun, right? So f2 dot plot 0, 0. This is going to make the sun. Now um, I'm going to, I already have my r1 and v1, but I'm just going to call that r is going to be equal to r1. v is v1. That's where it's going to start. Now uh, I do need a time and a time step. And let's just run this while t is less than uh, four. I don't even know how well that's going to work. Oh, dt is 0 0.01. So it's 100. Uh, calculate the force. F is going to be negative g times m times m times norm r divided by mag r squared. Right? Because the sun is at the center, I can just use the position of the object to calculate the force. Now I can update the velocity. Let's just do it as a velocity. v equals v plus f f f times dt divided by m, and now I'm going to update the position. r is r plus v times dt. Now I'm going to plot it, f1 dot plot, uh, r dot x, r dot y, update time, t equals t plus dt. Let's just run it. I think it'll work. There it goes. Okay, so right off the bat, we can get our closest approach right here, right? So right there, I have the right value. If you wanted to, we could run this uh, as long as the velocity is greater than zero, the y velocity is greater than zero, and then print the final velocity. So let's do that. 
So we start off with a while v dot y is greater than zero, because it's going to be negative. And then that will end it, and then we can print that. Print, I'll print both, uh, r, v. Let's just do that. And it didn't work. While it's greater than zero, or greater than or it started at zero, while it's greater than or equal to zero. It didn't work. Oh, while the position is greater than or equal to zero, that's what I wanted to. Um, it should be while I could do while the x velocity is negative. So let's do while v dot x is uh, less than zero. Right, so it's negative. Once it becomes not negative, then that's at the closest point. There we go. And then there's my position. That's what we had. And there's my velocity. Um, you'd have to see, you'll notice here that it's not quite perfect. Um, but I had 2.99. It's pretty close in the y direction. I'm going to call it a win. Win. Okay. I think it's a good, pretty good problem. If you want that, this code, I'll put the code down below. But that's it for astrophysics. I'll talk to you later.